every ground troop in the entire game. And there's a giant arrow. Oh, and a fireball. As we gear up for the grand finals of the Creative Master series between Rikiras, Yo-Yo, and Klaus, we got a show match for you today. We got Sars and Gaku taking on Birdo and Temper. All these players played in the Creative Masters in the earliest stages of the tournament and got eliminated. So now they're just gonna go out here and give us one final showdown before we head to the grand finals and decide our Creative Masters season three winners. So ladies and gentlemen, Gaku's in and it looks like he's got a lot of super miners here. In fact, he's not just got a bunch of super miners. He's got double overgrowth and nine bat spells. Okay, he's definitely got my attention. Let's see what he can do with this as he goes in with a Ice Golem to go ahead of the Queen and get into that defensive Queen, getting as much of the splash damage out of the way as possible here. That's the goal when we're trying to push in these heroes to try to get as many of these splash damage defenses as absolutely possible. But we need to get this Molten Inferno and the Wizard Tower under control at the very top of the base. So he's got extra Ice Golem there. He'll overgrowth out the core of the base there, and he's going to start moving this that way through, but this Molten Inferno doing a lot of damage right there. And I don't know what he's thinking here with these bats. I feel like that uh, multi-inferno is single-handedly going to kill all the bat wave. Okay, he pops the ward ability. He pops the ward ability. And he protects the bats, but they're taking the scenic rat to go back to the multi-inferno, and they're going to die. They're all going to die. I felt like he needed to get way more value out of that. He got the eagle artillery, and that was, that was almost every single spell that he had invested into that. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be a very, very big problem. But he will put the Log Launcher to the core of the base. The Log Launcher can't hit anything because it's still all under overgrowth. He's just not one star right now. He's got all these super miners. This one is looking like it done. He absolutely needed that multi-inferno to go down with the same standing. This one is obviously going to fail, but he'll get the super miners to the town hall. And they will all die. But then they'll blow up in his face and they'll take it down. It's a two star. I have to wonder if Gaku would have got the warded down to protect the bats a little bit better if he could have potentially saved that. However, let's get into Birdo going in with, it looks like a Skelly Donut. He's got Sneaky Goblins, a mashup of different tanking troops, lots of wizards here, but it looks like the bats are able to take out all their primary targets right there. And with the CC out of the way, nope, just kidding. He did not get the CC. That was not one of his targets there. He just went after the Monolith. And the Eagle Artillery. And a multi-archer tower. So that's some really good value. But he still has to deal with the clan castle. And he'll do a warden walk with a fireball. Okay, alright, alright. I haven't really seen a lot of people play with the fireball with the warden walk. And a skelly donut. But he does get the clan castle destroyed. And that is the most important thing. Like, we don't get the skelly donut to destroy the clan castle. But the clan castle still gets destroyed before the troops deploy out of it because he hit it with a fireball. But the king is missing his funnel right now. And that's a little bit of a problem. That ice golem freeze it. He'll throw it a couple of balloons here. The balloons will get out in front. And it looks like the balloons will be right in position to be able to pick up tanking. Or maybe they won't. Hang in there, Warden. Okay. Yeah, got it open. Got it done. King is able to step to the room, get the assist. Rope champion over the right side of the base there. We'll try to collapse in that area there. She still has her ability with the hog of the haze file, so she'll break the ring of defenses over to where the skelly donut and I guess the fireball both were able to take out a big section of the base there, but the queen keeps on moving. Battle drill up at the very top. He's still got the sneaky goblins that he can use to go secure the town takedown, but it looks like he missed a wall break. Oh no, he, he makes the wall breaker invisible, but that means he does not have an invisibility for the sneaky goblins. They step in. There's a lot of them though, and he will get the town hall down. He had enough numbers there that he could make up for not bringing a extra invisibility, but he'll throw in a pile of regular barbarians to distract him as a king, and then a couple of headhunters to actually take him down. That's a nice way to deal with him. And he had to do that after these expos were tanked. Otherwise, he would have quickly lost his extra distraction right there. But he throws in giants. He has extra sticky goblins. He's throwing in wizards all around the edge of the base. He's still got the hogs moving, and the queen is alive with the warden as well. This is absolutely crushed with the swag queen ability. That was a very... Very nice attack here for Birdo. Really like the Skelly Donut Fireball combination. With that out of the way, let's now see if Stars can get it done with 180 Barbarians. If you bring 180 Barbarians to an attack, you better have a good plan. But he's got Bats, he's got Earthquake, and he's got Fireball. He'll make his way forward here with the Invisibility. 
And we want to hit that clan castle if we can. Looks like he doesn't. All right, he puts the quakes down. Doesn't get the clan castle out of the way there, but he got the defensive queen out of the way and doesn't have a poison. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. He put his earthquakes to hit the clan castle, but he did not get that ricochet cannon down. So he's going to have to go back for that. He's got a baby dragon, though. He could definitely sneak in there with a baby dragon and potentially snipe it. It'd be nice if he had some minions, though. That'd be a little bit cheaper. But no room for minions when you got to bring 180 barbarians. But he will wall break into the core of the base there. However, the wall break did not get that intersection open. So we'll see where this queen ultimately decides she wants to go. Because the warden got sniped off as he pushed his way forward with the queen. So he's not going to be around to support there. But a lot of base left here. And he still has to fight the clan castle. And I have to assume that fireball was intended to destroy the clan castle. And shoot a little bit more to the right. So he's just going to have to deal with what he's got. But the baby dragon goes to support the queen. The queen. Oh, come on, queen. Come on, queen. That wall, out of all the walls you could have chosen, that's the one you want? Oh, man. Oh, man. He's, he's probably a little annoyed that the wall breaker didn't open up that intersection there. But he'll have to find an adjustment here because now he's in a lot more trouble than he was a minute ago. But he'll make his main force go in for the left side of the base there. Looks like some Valkyries were out of there. And the Valkyries ended up breaking the wall for the Queen. That actually might save this. King is able to get it done over the far right side of the base there. The Queen does end up having some of her healers transfer. But they survive. And she'll keep on kicking here. you put in the bats. He'll freeze up the multi-inferno. And the Queen will go to another wall to attack. But in the meantime, the World Champion is pushing in. Out of freezes, though. In the multi inferno we go. Got to get it down, get it down, get it down, get it down. Oh, it's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. Oh, they got it. They're alive, they're alive, they're alive. Oh my god, it's, it's going through. Are you kidding? Here comes the rest of his barbarians. There they are. And stars, I don't know how you recovered that. I, I thought that was beyond done. But he does pull through. It's a triple with 180 barbarians. I, look at this fireball again. He threw the fireball. And it went to the expo. I have to wonder if it was supposed to go to the bomb tower. Hard to say. Hard to say. However, let's get over to Timper. Timper will go in with... What is this army? Okay, we got four quakes. Four lightning. Pekkas. Golems. A bunch of wizards. And then a mashup of other random troops. But he'll use some sneaky goblins. Finds a Tesla down south. Up there at the top of the base there. Put it in a giant. And there's the warden. Angry Jelly. Angry Jelly. And level 26 fireball. Okay, these guys are loving the fireballs. But he'll go ahead and put in the double quake there. There's a giant arrow. Oh. Oh. Oh, I like this so far. There's lightning. And there's fireball. That's a, that's a nice combination right there. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of value. And now there's so much taken out of this base here. He's going to be in a much better spot than he could have hoped for. Or, no, I guess he probably could have hoped for because he planned it. <laughs> I think it's going exactly to plan. But he is going to get that warden to even survive. And he's not going to be under any threat for quite a while up there. So he's just going to chill. But down south, the queen will make her way forward and go after the eagle artillery and the multi arch tower. The king steps in and gets the defensive queen out of the way. And it looks like the warden will go all the way to the scatter shot there. And I guess he'll die at the scatter shot. That's fine. He already did his job. He already threw his fireball. Queen will survive far past her giant arrow because she spawned the expert healers there. So he's doing really, really good work. I like the setup here. Slammer gets hit by a black air bomb for a champion moving away in. Down for the defense of Road Champion with the Pekkas. Was able to get the support there. Pekkas and Headhunters were there to get the defensive Road Champion in the way. And he doesn't freeze the... Look out. You notice how he did not freeze the scatter shot. He could have froze the scatter shot, but the Queen was tanking it. And he wanted to come out of the freeze and then relock out of the Road Champion. He wanted to use the Queen as a damage sponge right there to keep the Road Champion potentially a bit more safer. But the Queen will go down now. He's throwing an Ice Gloom once again, focusing everything on keeping... The Royal Champion safe. Even look at this Lava Hound over here. The Lava Hound has troops continuously sprinkled in into that side of the base. And they're all dying as they drop in. 
but they are keeping the Lava Hound away from the Road Champion and keeping it off the left side of the base. So that was a very, very nice attack here for Timper. That is quite the troop bar, Gaku. We got Super Witches, Bullers, Witches. This is every ground troop in the entire game. And there's a giant arrow. Oh, and a fireball. Oh my God, a Noah's Ark with a fireball. Let's go. He takes the town hall down. And now we can start to make his way forward here with the queen spawning the healers and the warden and queen with their abilities exhausted will march forward and wrap into where the fireball was used. But he's going to go ahead and do a skilly donut. And I guess the abilities are already weakened up there. So he should really get him down relatively quick. Gets down the CC, gets down the Inferno. And now we set up even better. The base is cut in half right down the center with every building except for this wizard tower and the eagle artillery being removed and it looks like the siege breaks will start to get that wizard tower down so <laughs> eagle artillery i guess will be the cross point between one half of the base to the other half but in the meantime he's taking some poison tower damage to the right side of the healers and it's like he's gonna lose two healers because of that so give it on the queen of the warden there warden gets sniped off there by the defensive queen his queen gets some heavy damage on her, but she's alive. They see it off against the defensive grand warden, but the world champion steps in to get the assist, and the world champion will start to cut across the core of the base there while the king is able to give some taking over that. He's got Super Witch, he's got Pekka, he's got Root Rider, he's got Dragon, he's got Wizard, he's got Valkyrie, everything dropping to the left side of the base. He's got one of every ground troop in the game, and then toss it in at whatever air troops that can fit on top of that. But I love the Super Witch in the mix there. I mean, he did that one for me, I'm sure of it. He knows I love witches, and he just wanted to make sure that. He brought at least one of each kind just to try to win my favor. You know, that's because Gaku is a man of the people. He's a man of the people, and he'll bring what the people want to see. And in this one, he's able to bring the triple with the fireball giant arrow Noah's Ark. That might actually be the most invisibility that I have ever seen anybody bring into an attack. There are nine of them. He's got three healers. He's got a handful of super hogs. And he brought a random mashup of other troops. But he's going for the Skelly Bat Donut. That'll use up a handful of his invisibility. But I have to wonder what the rest of them are for. That is obviously too much to be able to take use of right here. But he will get the Clan Castle destroyed. He will get the Monolith destroyed. And unfortunately, he leaves up the Multi Archer Tower. At least he got his most important target. Like, if you had to choose two out of three of those targets, he got the best two. And now he'll make his way forward with all these extra invisibilities. And it looks like he's going to put invisible hogs in for the right side. Invisible super hogs. There's more. Oh, is he doing an invisible hog charge? Invisible super hogs continue to make their way forward. They're getting targeted a little bit there. It is some giant bombs, but... Like they're gonna get all the way in there another invisibility shifts a little bit there but oh okay okay they're still moving they're still moving <laughs> i mean it is the creative masters i don't know if that is like a repeatable trick that i think other people will start to implement into our own attacks but i'll give him points for creativity on that one because he does get the compartment almost cleared out there Except for the one building he could reach over the wall. And he almost got that one down as well. So I like the trick. I like it. That was fun. But he goes ahead and shoots a... What was that? Why did that shot go so... That was weird. Why did it look like the warden shot something out of the top of the base there that looked like it crossed like half of the base? That was kind of strange. I got to see the replay on that. That was weird. Um, but Birdo... We'll get the warden to get you in. He's got the fireball there, and he's sitting on an extra earthquake still. Level 27 fireball. Queen is able to get down that expo finally, and we'll go after this multi arch tower. But there's a fireball at the very top of the base there. So Queen goes down at the very bottom of the base there, and that's going to be a problem for him. And we're going to see how far he can pull it back here and see if he can recover this all the way to a triple. But the Roach Hammer and the Warden have a little of additional support. They're going to throw it at the top corner of the base. The Rock of Balloons. To get the ricochet cannon down, which will definitely help out the world champion significantly. But she'll pop the hog pump and search her way forward there. Warden is boosting the damage output. But the warden's hog of the healers here. He'll get his way to the multi inferno. We'll get it down. Okay, okay. Expo stays dead. And though the warden makes his way directly to the eagle artillery. Dragon Bite is, is still here. And the warden is taking a lot of damage there. But he's boosting the healing output of his healers here. 
He does end up dodging the strike of the Eagle Artillery and gets it down. Okay. Oh, okay. He's done. He's done. He's not going to make it. He's not going to make it. Okay. It is a miss. It's a miss. And now we're tied up as we go to the final exchange. I thought for a second the Warden shot a... Oh, it was the Eagle Artillery. <laughs> okay. It wasn't the Warden finding a second fireball in his uh, inventory. It was the Eagle Artillery Strike that just happened to line up with him when he dropped. So that was something else, okay? <laughs> However, we got stars. Oh, look at this army. 260 barbarians. Nine bat spells? Whoa, stars and a fireball. He's going for the big throw. And he's able to wipe out the entirety of the core of the base. Getting down the clan castle as well. That was some good value right there. That's a high, high value fireball. Into a very, very dense base. And now he has to get it all the way through with his 260 barbarians. And that'll give him the best chance of winning. I don't know what the percentage split is between the two teams right now. I think, I think that yellow mode actually has percentage advantage, if I remember right. I don't have to go back and check. I guess we'll check after this attack here. And then we'll see what the threshold to win is for Birdo and Temper. But it looks like the Queen will continue off to the side of the base. And he'll put in a, a bath spell. Gets the poison tower to throw. Oh. Huh. I would have never thought of that. Oh, Blimp falls short. On the wrong side of the wall. Oh. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's really bad. Because he has Sneaky Goblin inside of it. He does not have any protection for it. It does end up having the Hound go off and die in the bottom quarter by itself. And the Sneaky Goblins cannot get the Town Hall. I always had a lot of trouble right there. Like, this attack was off to a very, very good start. Everything seemed to be going the way that it needed to go. But as soon as that Blimp misses that Town Hall, he's at a risk of a one-star right now. I don't think he can recover this. He's getting nothing out of the bats. Oh, rip. What can you do about that? There's nothing. There's nothing you can do about that. He took a risk. And that blimp, Karen Sneaky Goblins, had to reach the Town Hall compartment. There was no other way around it. Electro Dragons and Super Valkyries might be one of the rarest combinations in all of Clash of Clans. But I guess we'll see what he can do here as the Skelly Donut is able to take its primary targets over the side of the base there. So it does some Yetis. And the Warden... And it was already a strange combination. But it looks like he will also break out the Angry Jelly Fireball on the Warden. We do. Oh, oh. That's not where he wanted that. That's... Yeah, that's not a very good spot to put a Fireball. Just going to go out on a limb here. And say that he probably wanted it to go... And hit the scatter shot. Or somewhere with a little bit more value than he was able to get right here. So that's a little bit of a problem. Does that throw the war though? What if he one stars? What if he one starred right now and ended up swinging the war? Imagine. I mean, he's got a lot of force to go to the tunnel hall here. So I think I think he'll be fine. I think he'll win the war here. But I don't know if he can pull this back. I guess we'll see. We saw stars pull it back earlier, so. Stranger things have happened. But he does miss the town hall. Oh, where's the king go? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Got a lava hound. An inferno dragon. Witch right there. Oh. Okay. Yeah, this town hall is still not going down. But he'll throw in a couple of balloons. The balloons will go in and try to clear the way for a blimp. What's in the blimp, though? Blimp will sail in now and try to go for another layer of backup to get this town hall down. Or he one stars and throws the war. Freeze it. Yetis. Okay, he's got yetis. He's, he's okay. He's got yetis inside. That's why bringing yetis inside of a blimp is always, always, always a good idea. Because you always want to make sure that you have that as a backup. And there's a lot of different different siege machines that can get value with yetis. But it's always nice to have that in your back pocket there to make sure that you can safely go for a backup hotel takedown with a blimp in your back pocket as well. And it looks like this one will rack into the 80s. But it is shutting down quickly. But ladies and gentlemen, don't you worry. This was just a show match. The main event 
for the grand finals of the Creative Master Series will be Klaus taking on Rikiras and Yo-Yo. That will be in our next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Make sure you're subscribed.